it is a vegetable, but I mean, it's 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 in the terms of, of cooking, it's starch. You want meat, starch, and veggie. That's what chives are for. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi, host Eric here. Welcome to Talk with Best People. And today we're talking about T I F I T E F E. We started a video earlier where I talked about it a little bit, but I'm gonna do the other half, which is the T I F I thing. Why is it that if you got T I second slot? You end up with FI7 and vice versa. Well, the answer is this. If you prioritize your own feelings as a tool function, as your primary first go to way of evaluating the world, if you, have, if you prioritize your own feelings, then you're FI. But if you prioritize an objective matrix instead, an objective introverted matrix instead, then you're going to pervert TI. Now, that's going to be to the exclusion of what? Precisely your own feelings, and then in a secondary level, the feelings of others. The logic of a thing may very well be consistent with the TE execution of how to do it, but that's not a priority. It's unvalued. However, the TI consistency logic aspect of it is directly in contradiction to your feelings to the extent that your feelings agree with it and renders and considers your feelings irrelevant regardless. So as a consequence, you can't possibly value FI if you value TI as your introverted um, evaluatory metric. And if you have objectivity as the matrix through which you understand evaluation, then with TI necessarily is going to go FE. Since it's a direct contradiction with FI, you look for some objective understanding of FI, namely the displays of feelings that others put forward and can be talked about and understood in the way people represent their feelings abstractly. Now, what I think is of note is that if you have FE as a second function, you're much more of a real-time FE person. And if you have FE as a third function, you're much more of an abstract FE person. So if you're an abstract FE person like me, I'm very much concerned with, with social perceptions and how I'm being perceived by others, but I'm not necessarily concerned with other people's feelings in the moment. To the extent that my roughness with other people's feelings in the moment starts to adversely affect perceptions of me, then I sweep, 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 and care more in the moment until perceptions are returned to as they ought to be, namely that I'm a really nice guy. Really important. It's really important that you all know this. I am such a nice guy. I really am. And... You, uh, you viewer, I haven't. I don't say it to everybody. I'm just saying it to you. You are my single favorite talking to fans people viewer. You really are. So I want you to know that viewer, and I want you to know that each of you here in the room are my favorite participant. You know who I'm talking to. You know it's about you, really. Anyway, that's that's me going to work there, doing a little perception management at the expense of actual feelings as you can see <laughs> the actual feeling is i really like being liked that's the actual feeling there i think anyway uh no but the point is that the fe is an a way of accomplishing fi and others and whether or not you care more about that in the moment or whether you care more about that abstractly is going to depend on how high up in the stack it is. Same true of TI. Like, Kimberly cares about TI. It's her hidden agenda. She cares about consistency. She wants things to make sense in the abstract. But in the moment, she doesn't really care about TI. It's not really, it's not really guiding her decision-making in the moment. It's providing the framework through which her decision-making is rendered valuable or not valuable long-term. Vice versa for me. I don't really care about FE in the moment, but I care a lot about FE as a framework that guides me in terms of how I execute TI in the long term. And that's why the two objective evaluatory metrics, TI and FE, need to be together, and TE and FI need to be apart, and that the one that's your second, the opposite one is going to be your seventh. Whether that's if you're TI second, then you're going to have FE seven. If you're TE second, you're going to have FE second. And I didn't record the first half of this, which was the TE FE part. That was kind of dumb me. But anyway, that's my thoughts on TIFI. Anybody else want to chime in on the TIFI uh, conundrum? I do, but I don't want to sound stupid. I bet you won't. 
Okay. Uh, I might get get this wrong, and I'm fine with that. But um, I think I, I had like kind of a eureka moment when when you were explaining that how how uh, well you explained beforehand that no, this is not related. Nope. Okay. Uh, I'm not. That's fine. I'm not uh, That's affluent fine. enough with yeah, this. The thought, the thought is still in its uh, magma form. Yeah. It has to come out and then become lava, and then you can say, "Look at this piece of lava." Yeah, it's not refined yet. Uh, regardless, it's not refined in my head. This whole idea either. I do believe that there's a, a good distinction to be made between the real time and the abstract versions of these things. I think they tend Certainly. to correlate with two, three. I think there are exceptions that causes some weird subtypes. For example, I think Taylor prioritizes a physical or real time form of NE over the metaphysical form that naturally you would have, you would tend to prioritize, I think, with your dominant function. I haven't worked all that shit out yet, but it's part of this, uh, t- the working title for it is The Moisture Taxonomy, but it's probably just a, <laughs> a working good, title. I, I don't that's think a good it's, uh, it's going to be the long-term title of it. Yeah, so let's pull this bong rip and celebrate another day of successfully at, uh, analyzing Cognition, metacognition, and the uses of cognitive functions to create the individual as a rich tapestry of human being. <laughs> well, the thing is saying, like, okay, uh, my, what's that yellow background one? The test for the yellow background with the yellow background? The yellow background test. I Here, I'll know. just fucking link. I'll just link my results. My results pulled out. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, uh, <laughs> mine pulled out a, a high yeah. sense extroverted sense sensing, which uh, uh, Suze pointed out was odd in an ENTP, as in the sense of reading gestures and faces. Uh, that's Effie. Is that what you mean, Saint? Oh, is it? I see. That's Effie. Not well, wouldn't that be understanding what they're feeling? Well, no, but the the thing is, I guess it's a matter of framework. SE either goes along with FI or it goes along with FE. If it goes along with FE, then physical cues in real time will be one thing that SE uses to accomplish its slay in the puss, which it pursues. Uh, <clears throat> but for intuitives, we prioritize more important things, frankly, and the problem, one of the problems is we internalize a bunch of bullshit about how we ought to be push slayers or something when we're not by nature. We're thinkers and infantiles. So, you know, it's one of the problems with being an ENTP or INTP male is we are awash in a society that values another kind of maleness that's fundamentally inferior in every sense of the word, and yet we aspire to it and feel ourselves as though we need to, to, to live up to this standard of toughness that um, is not tough, ultimately. It's about justifying things with inadequate justifications, whether it be, you know, just ha- how people treat each other or, or executing the rules or whatever other hierarchical bullshit people do to justify their own bad behavior. I mean, you can you can say something's legally justified and it still be bad behavior. There's morality beyond beyond the minimum, you know? There's morality beyond the minimum. It exists and people should adhere to it if they're decent human beings. And it requires people to actually engage in a moral calculus. It's not enough to just be like, oh well, the rules say that's for fucking retards who can't think. Well, okay. Real human then, beings, then you bring on a, a whole other topic of what is what is a, 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 an adequate morality to have? Because you know, I mean, you can you can you can sense it from other people or hear it from other people, but they you you can't actually have that sense of morality. What do you mean? Uh, for example, um, like like what this guy is saying, Satan saying is like faking FE to the maximum. Um, apparently, um, uh, if you're being forced to fake FE in an ENTP person, they could be considered as something else. 
Well, you're not really believing your, your, that morality. You're just adhering to a set of standards. Well, I believe in a negative morality, one that precludes me from doing certain things, not one that compels me to do certain things. Well, in the same sense, like, um, why is murder necessarily bad, you know? Why is murder inherently bad? Well, why does it have to be inherently bad? Well, uh, what I mean is, according to your explanation, you said, aside from uh, uh, rules and standards, you should have a, uh, there, there is a sense of morality past the minimum, which uh, well, I I, I'm that, having trouble okay. understanding here. All right, well, let me, let me clarify that what I'm saying is a lot of people use legal justifications to engage in behavior that's wicked. It's wicked uh, if it transgresses okay. upon the rights of another. I'm not saying that we shouldn't adhere to those negative rights rules. Of course we should. Um, to the extent that another doesn't transgress upon my rights, I ought not transgress upon theirs. And I have an individual human moral responsibility to adhere to that that goes beyond anything that my job might tell me to do. That's why it's not okay for death camp guards to say I was just following orders. Right? We have a basic understanding that there is a morality beyond conformity to social norms that, um, that truly decent people adhere to and that truly wicked people ignore. Right. But that, that again, is, is following the standard via law. I mean, well, no, it's not. You know, I'm saying don't follow the standard via law. Follow yeah. The yeah, right. That's what you're based saying. Based on transgression. The reason transgression is wrong is because to say otherwise is to advocate something else, okay? And, and the thing is, it, it's relatively absolute insofar as that you cannot advocate nothing. You have to advocate some course of, of TI approach to, to understanding ethics and morality. To argue simply that you will ignore the TI is to deny your own moral agency and to say, I will engage in whatever wickedness I see fit based on what the rules allow me to engage in. You're not human at that point, basically. You're just, you're, you're everything that's wrong with the world. You're everything that's wrong with humanity. Well, I mean, I think, I think those kinds of people are definitely not a, not, not a socially, you know, good person, for example, but they certainly, uh, allow us to set the standard of what is good versus evil and thus necessary. Well, that's the thing. They need to ask that question, right? It's not enough to say what is legal. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I don't know. The thing is, that's a little off topic. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking FI and TI, and that's where FI and TI ultimately agree. FI goes, why are you hurting this person? And then TE goes, because the rules say. And TI goes, but are those rules just? Is this reaction based on transgression or not? Okay. And when yeah. it evaluates it in in the negative, then obviously FI and TI and FE all agree that decency demands one thing, and then TE, the rules, demand another. I'm opposed to rules and hierarchy because... They're inadequately particulars when they need to be, and they're too particulars when they need not apply at all. So that's the problem. They get the universalism thing backwards. Well, I, I wonder about that because I often, I often, depending upon the level of, uh, of how much this person deserves that particular treatment, I will go as far as what the law allows me to do. Well, that, but see, you're basing it first on how much they deserve. In other words, how much it's TI consistent with some normative standard that you have inside of you that adjudicates that issue of whether or not somebody is deserving. That's a TI-FI thing. That's not a TE thing. Right. And, and you're saying the FI would say, well, it's still wrong, right? Well, FI and TI might disagree there. TI is sort of the compromise spot between TE and FE, or FI in that regard. If I always wants to forgive and forget, if it sees suffering, it says, stop, stop, stop the suffering. Um, F.E. might be like, fuck him. Make him suffer. He's a bad guy. And then 
TE is going to be like, well, the rules say this. And TI comes to the rescue and says, okay, all you fucking children, sit down. Here's a set of standards we can all agree on. It's universal. It makes sense. And if you fucking children would stop being such fucking children and listen to the adults in the room, and you get things straight and evaluate things correctly instead of being constantly retarded and lame. Okay. And that's the end of this video about FI and TI. I hope you enjoyed it. It was really important that we understand how our FI feelings and our TI thinking can conform to enjoy a level of truth that neither can attain independently. Thanks for watching Talking with Famous People. I have been host Eric, and this delightful romp of a reality show that we call metaphysical, sort of real, whatever, who knows. Have a good day. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. It's the only way you'll grow big and strong.